You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. All right, Brian Kelly's first staff as the LSU uh, head football coach is complete. Uh, this is the worst kept secret, but it is now out officially. Uh, LSU has hired Cortez Hankton as the new wide receiver coach and passing game coordinator. So he takes over that passing game coordinator role, which was held last year by DJ Mangus and previously by Joe Brady. This is... um. This is a huge addition to LSU staff. And I love what Brian Kelly has done in very thoughtfully putting this staff together. And, y'all, let's just be real. Most of the time, coaches get the benefit of the doubt when they make a hire. We always sort of just err on the positive side, just believing that every... Same with recruiting. Every three-star is going to be the, the diamond in the rough. Uh, and every five-star that picked another school is going to be a bust. Just, <laughs> just the way that it goes. But I think with Hankton, there's a lot of legitimacy to to this being an incredible addition to LSU, um, LSU staff. I, I, I'm going to say this, and I don't mean any disrespect to Mickey Joseph, because I think Mickey Joseph worked very hard as a LSU's receivers coach. But Mickey Joseph was hired to recruit New Orleans, and he had to learn the wide receiver position and how to coach it. Remember, right when Mickey Joseph was hired, they also had Jerry Sullivan on staff. And for all the jokes that Terrio made about Jerry Sullivan over the years, Jerry Sullivan is a very experienced receivers coach, technically. So the, the job Sullivan had initially was, hey, teach Mickey Joseph how to be a receivers coach. With Cortez Hankton, you're talking about a guy that played receiver collegiately at Texas Southern, that played receiver in the National Football League from 2003 to 2008, then in the United Football League, in the UFL, has coached receivers at Dartmouth, Vanderbilt, and Georgia. You don't need to worry about the technical nature of the position with that guy. He is he's, he's done it as a player, and he's done it as a coach, and not just as a coach, but as a coach in the SEC at the highest level of college football. And then on top of that, you add someone with tremendous recruiting prowess. Cortez Hankton's 40 years old. He's a young guy. He played at St. Aug and then went to Texas Southern, as we mentioned, then in the NFL. Young guy with ties to New Orleans, to the state of Louisiana. And, and that can't be understated. When LSU football today tweeted the graphic that Cortez Hankton had been hired, Hankton quote tweeted LSU in all caps the word home with prayer hand emojis and then a purple and a gold heart. You cannot understate or you cannot overstate how important it is for a lot of these guys, coaches, and now you're seeing it with some of the players. We saw it with Gregory Brooks and Joe Fouché from Arkansas. The opportunity to come home to LSU. That matters for a lot of people. Uh, it, the, Cortez Hankton left the reigning national champions. The team that just won a natty a week ago today. He left them for a rebuild under a new head coach. He, he left the national champions for a rebuild under a new head coach. And yes... He's got the passing game coordinator title. And yes, I'm certain he's going to be making more money at LSU than he was at Georgia as their receivers coach. I'm certain of it. But don't forever, for a second, minimize the importance of, of the dirt, of the geography, of the location. When you have family here, it matters. It's an opportunity to come home, to be near family, to be at the state school that Everyone grows up watching and idolizing and cheering for and wanting to play for. And he's no different. I love 
what Brian Kelly has done with this staff and that he is building a culture with winners on staff. Brian Kelly has had undefeated seasons at Notre Dame, at Cincinnati, at Central Michigan. He was in the BCS championship game, made the college football playoff a couple of times. Cortez Hankton just won a national championship at Georgia. Mike Denbrock, undefeated season at Cincinnati, was just in the playoff. Matt House, Super Bowl champion with the Kansas City Chiefs, been to -to back-to-back Super Bowls. He's building a staff around winners. The culture is not just winning, but winning at the highest level, winning championships. That's what the people on staff are expecting and are expected to do when they're here. I love that. Timing matters as well. I know we've talked about Cortez Hankton, and this was a foregone conclusion, but it allowed him to stay with Georgia through the national championship. And remember, until Friday, there was a recruiting dead period. Well, the dead period is now lifted. And it is going to be a really busy two weeks leading up, two weeks plus a few days, leading up to the February signing day. Because LSU's got to finish off this class. They only signed 13 in the early signing period. We know how active they've been in the transfer portal. They had a whole bunch of transfers, uh, targets on campus this past weekend. And now the official visits begin with the with the high school prospects that you're trying to finish in this class in February. And having Cortez Hankton on staff now is massive. Because your staff is complete, and he's a guy that can get out there and go pound the pavement for you and do in-homes and, and especially in the state of Louisiana, trying to finish with guys in this state who who you're trying to land. Jacoby Matthews, Trevante Citizen, y'all know the list. But again, the biggest advantage, y'all, I said this when Brian Kelly took the job, the advantage is Louisiana. There are only a couple of places in college football that have the inherent advantage that LSU has of being the only Power Five in a talent-rich state. In a talent-rich state. That's the underscore. It doesn't matter if you're the only Power Five in Idaho. Actually, there's no Power Five in Idaho. But you understand my point. It doesn't matter for Tennessee because there's no talent in Tennessee. Or there's... There's not a lot. You can't recruit your roster just recruiting your state's borders. In Mississippi, you got Mississippi State and Ole Miss, and you get pillaged by LSU and Bama and Auburn and Georgia. Same thing in the state of Florida. Yeah, there's a ton of talent. Same thing in Texas, but everybody comes and plucks, you know, cherry picks players. In Louisiana, it's LSU. And most guys grow up wanting to play at LSU. It's the inherent advantage you have. The same thing that Ohio State has. Same thing that Georgia has. Again, with respect to Georgia Tech, but they're just not fishing in the same pond that Georgia is. And then you can get guys like Cortez Hankton who just want to come coach at LSU because it's home. Frank Wilson gives up a head coaching job to come coach at LSU as a position coach. It's just home. Joe Fouché is a captain at Arkansas leaves Arkansas to come to LSU because it's home. Wants to play for the purple and gold. You can hardly blame him. Brian Kelly's taking full advantage of knowing he has that leverage. He's taking full advantage of it early, and I suspect he will for as long as he's the LSU head coach. Uh, Cortez Hankton uh, has been hired. He's the final um, on-field staff member for LSU. Uh, Brian Kelly's first staff is now complete. Now the work really gets, gets, um, gets going as uh, they try to finish off this 2022 signing class. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.